Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We will be covering interview questions and answers related to Java multi-threading in multiple parts. So in our first part, we will see first 10 most asked and most basic questions. So if you are new to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe. So without any further delay, let's start. The first most basic question regarding multi-threading that can be asked for a fresher level interview is what is multi-threading and threads? So multi-threading is a process of executing multiple threads at the same time. It consumes less memory and is more efficient than running multiple processes. And for thread, you can mention thread is a lightweight sub-process running under a single process itself. Threads share the same address space in the memory. And the cost of communication between threads is lower than the cost of communication between different processes. Next question can come to you is what is difference between a thread and a process? Any program which is running is known as process, but thread on the other hand is a subset of that running process. Processes do not depend on threads, but threads depend on processes because threads are actually running inside the processes. So if a process is exiting, all the threads inside that process will also exit. But if a thread running inside a process exits, that does not have any impact on the process. The different processes have different address space in the memory. But as we have already discussed, threads running under the same process, they share the same address space as well. Communication between process is slower than threads. And the last is context switching is faster between threads as compared to processes. So context switching is a concept where CPU is actually uh, changing the execution from one to another process. So that thing is actually slower in case of processes. But if CPU has to switch between the threads, that specific context switching is faster. The next question which can come to you is what are the different states of a thread? So there are mainly five states of thread. First one is new. A thread class object is created in that state, but it is still not running. So thread will start when we call the start method of the thread. So till that point, thread is known as in the new state. The next state is runnable. So when we call start method of the thread, then thread is ready to be picked up by the scheduler for execution. Try to understand that runnable does not mean it is currently running and calling the start method also does not mean that thread will start execution at the same time. Dot start method will make the thread ready to be picked by the scheduler for execution. So at that time thread is known as at the runnable state. The next one is a running state. So when actually the scheduler picks up the thread and start its execution at that time that thread is known as in running state. The next state is waiting or blocked. So thread is not in execution, but alive waiting for other threads to finish. So that specific state is known as waiting or blocked because it is waiting for some other thread or is its execution is blocked by some other thread to finish its task. The last one is dead or terminated. So in this case, when thread is executed completely and a thread is terminated, when its run method exits, so that means whatever implementation we have done in the run method that completely executed after that, that specific thread is uh, changing its state to dead or terminated. The next question they can ask you is like, what are the different ways, basic ways to create a thread? So there are two different ways. First one is extending the thread class and overriding the run method. So here on the left hand side, you can see we are creating our class thread creation and it is extending thread class. So as it is extending thread class, we are overriding its run method and we provide whatever implementation that we want to do in the multi-threaded application. And in our main method here, we are creating two threads by creating objects of thread creation class itself and calling dot start method on them. So in this way, we can start two threads which will be executing this specific piece of code simultaneously. The other way is implementing the runnable interface. So in that case, actually, uh, instead of extending thread class, we will implement the runnable interface, which is available. The other processing will be similar. We need to override the run method here in that, that case as well. And we need to put the same logic that we put earlier in the run method for extending thread class. But there is a difference in 
calling and creating the thread object in that case so here you can see we are directly creating the object of our main class which we uh, which is actually extending the thread class but when we implement runnable first we need to create object of that class our main class and after that we need to create object of thread class itself and pass that runnable instance as a argument in constructor so after that we can start the thread class object which we have created in the similar way using dot start method so there are few benefits of using a runnable interface implementation rather than extending thread first one is like uh, if we know in java we can only extend a single class so suppose if we use this first method which is extending thread class then this specific class will not be able to extend any other class so if it is required for as part of inheritance we need to um, extend some more classes then this method is not useful so in that case runnable will come uh, as very handy like we can implement runnable and then we can extend the other class which we want to inherit from the next question which can come to you is what is the difference between sleep and wait method so wait actually tells the calling current thread to wait until other thread invokes the notify or notify all method for this object but sleep actually pauses the execution of current thread second is thread loses the ownership in case of wait but not in case of sleep so what does it mean so when wait is called then thread will lose the ownership of that specific object that means it will not be locked by that currently running thread but if we call thread.sleep in that case actually it will keep on holding the lock and uh, pause the execution of the program itself next one is wait belongs to object class uh, wait is the method which is defined in a um, parent object class but sleep actually belongs to the thread class only wait should only be called from synchronized context which is not in case of sleep wait is non static but sleep is a static method the next question could be can we call run directly instead of start to start a specific thread so as we have already seen what we are doing we are overriding the run method while we are either extending thread class or implementing runnable so is it possible to call this run method directly with the object that we have instead of calling dot start method so answer to that will be yes we can run it directly so there is no um, restriction to that but it in that case it will not execute as a separate thread when we call the start method it internally calls the run method which creates a new stack for thread while directly calling run will not create that new stack so in that case if we directly call the run method it will not act as a separate thread it will be running in the main thread only next important question is what is the difference between class lock and object lock so class lock in java each and every class has a unique lock usually referred to as a class level lock these locks are achieved using keyword static synchronized and it can be used to make static data thread safe so class lock we are using when we want to uh, keep uh, the static data thread safe so that no other multiple threads should be able to update the static data on the other hand object lock is actually each and every object has a unique lock in java so that is usually referred as object lock so these locks are achieved using keyword only synchronized and it can be used to protect the non static data so here you can see the main difference object lock is used to protect the non static data but class lock is used to protect the static data the next question related to threads could be what is a daemon thread and how it is actually different from a user thread so the threads which we have discussed like how to create threads those specific threads which were created those are known as user threads user and daemon threads are basically two types of threads which are used by using thread class user thread which is a non daemon thread so user thread have a specific life cycle and its life is independent of any other thread so it will be running independently jvm waits for any of the user threads to complete its task before terminating so if jvm is going to terminate it will see if any user thread is running and wait for its execution to be completed so when user threads are finished then jvm terminates the whole program along with associated daemon threads also 
so then what is the difference between user thread and daemon threads so daemon thread are actually referred as service provider that provide services and support to the user threads so these are not the main threads there are basically two different methods available in the thread class for daemon threads first one is set daemon second one is is daemon so the is daemon will actually tell us on which thread we are trying to call this is daemon if that specific thread is a daemon thread or not daemon thread will are actually uh, most of the time running in the background for providing the services there is one more difference between daemon thread and user thread so as we have already seen that jvm will wait for any user threads to complete its execution before terminating it but that is not the case in case of daemon threads so if daemon thread is running then jvm will not actually care about its uh, running state if it is going to terminate it will terminate so the follow up question to that can be like how we can create the daemon thread so we can create the daemon threads using a uh, set daemon true method so this is the method where we can pass true as an argument that means on whichever thread we call this method by passing true value that thread will be marked as a daemon thread next question could be what is the difference between notify and notify all so there are these are two methods which are available in object class so notify it sends the notification and wakes up only a single thread instead of multiple threads that are waiting in the objects monitor so there might be a lock away present on the specific object and multiple objects are still waiting to get that lock released so if we do only notify it will only wake up a single thread but on the other hand if we send notify all while releasing the lock then it will wake all the threads and allow them to complete the objects monitor instead of a single thread the next question is why wait notify and notify all methods are present in object class so we know that every object has a monitor that allows threads to hold a lock on the object but the thread class doesn't contain any monitors on its own so thread usually waits for the objects monitor lock by calling the wait method that we have already discussed in the previous section so whenever there is a lock it will wait for objects monitor by calling the wait method on that object and notify the other threads that they are waiting for the same lock using notify or notify all method therefore these met three methods are called on objects only and allowed all the threads to communicate with each other are created on the object class itself instead of creating it in a thread class so that's it for the first part of this video we will come up with more advanced questions in multi threading in our upcoming videos so if you like the video please do like share and subscribe i really appreciate you for being here with me and supporting me thanks for watching see you next time